Thank you, everyone, for joining us today for our inventory webcast. In our session today, we'll be discussing what inventory is, why it's important for businesses, and some of the common challenges with it. We will also show how you can improve this process by using software and hear from some of our customers about their experiences. A little bit about me. I'm Dustin. I've been working at Morel, focusing on software solutions for over 10 years. I would like to start here with this statement. Inventory is the bridge between production and shipping, and having high visibility enables an efficient dispatch process. In other words, if you can't find it, and find it fast, what happens to customer service levels? How then do we enable this? If we review our theme here, if we look at our right product to the right customer at the right time, every time, where does inventory fit into this puzzle? In our labeling webcast, we discussed how we can use software to quickly and easily adapt to changes from regulations, customers, and marketing. At the same time, we increase visibility on production and gain confidence that the right label is on the box. Therefore, the labeling webcast addresses the right product component. In the dispatch webcast, we discussed how we can use software to achieve visibility over getting the products assigned to customers and out the door. This covers our right customer, right time, and every time component. The next piece of the puzzle is inventory. What is the traditional approach to inventory? Let's explore this using pen and paper or something like Excel to track inventory levels and locations. As boxes are produced, they are stacked up onto a pallet. After the pallet is complete, the contents are marked on a form and the form is attached to the pallet. Now that our pallet is complete, the forklift driver or hand truck operator deposits the product in inventory. The location is written down or placed in some other logical format, such as stakes go in this aisle and drumsticks go into this slot. The levels are transcribed later after the form is received by administration. Let's take a quick look at restacking pallets. Oftentimes, pallets need to be consolidated or split apart to assist in the order picking process. In this traditional approach, we take our pallet, split it into two, remove the old license plate, and attach two new license plates. The results are then recorded on paper and sent off to administration for transcription. Does this original license plate ever stay in circulation and cause confusion? How is the shipping department supposed to find the product they need? They consult the Excel document or a printed version of it so they can find the right product. They drive their forklift to the destination and pick up the product. Is the product where they think it is? How about we talk about doing a physical inventory check in this method? One time a month, we get the crew together and we go count all the products and pallets. The results are written down and everyone has specific orders as to what to count. The results are consolidated and transcribed. Hopefully, there's no duplicates or transposed numbers. What are some of the challenges of this traditional approach? In this next section, we will explore that. Let's take a look at palletizing. Is this traditional approach so bad? We do have a few points of failure here. What if there's a typo in the license plate or the license plate falls off? Can we still maintain visibility over what we have? We pick up a pallet and we put it away. That should be easy. What if we make a mistake in the transcription or the assigned location? Can we quickly identify where the problem is and know how to resolve it? 
Let's break the restacking pallets process down a little bit. We have a license plate for a full pallet. We make a new pallet. We make a license plate for the new pallet. Do we make a license plate for the old pallet or do we forget? If we take it a step further, what if we make a new license plate and leave the old one there as well? Now we have three license plates. How can we tell which one is correct? Shipping needs to find the product. They drive to where they think the product is, and what if it's not there? How much extra time does it take to find the correct product when it's not there? And when they find it, did they pick the right pallet? For physical inventory, the crew suits up, gets clipboards and pens, and runs off and counts everything. What could possibly go wrong? Did they count the wrong aisle? Was there any double counting? How many hours does it take to reconcile the documents? And even then, is it accurate enough? Let me introduce Gail Jansow. She's one of our key account managers and would like to share an experience she had with a customer about the challenges of pen and paper inventory. Hi, Dustin. Glad to be here with you. Uh, do you remember when we were at that one site? Let's, let's just call it Savory Seafoods. Could you uh, tell us your first impression of their shipping cooler? Yeah, sure. So I, I remember walking into this cooler and thinking to myself, wow, there's a lot of underutilized space in this cooler. There was a lot of product that seemed to be towards the front of the cooler, a lot of holes in the racks towards the middle, and like nothing at the back of the cooler at all. And then there also seemed to be some product that was just sitting in the aisle wait, waiting to be put away. Yeah, and then they had that guy, I think his name was Ian. And what were your impressions of his practices when he was putting these products in the cooler? So I did have an opportunity to watch Ian put some product away. And, you know, he he would put product away um, where there was space available, pretty much towards the front of the cooler. He did stack a couple boxes in the aisles waiting for things, waiting for some space to be put away, or maybe he knew that they were going to go out later that night. Um, and then he would go back to his station and he would write things down, go pick up a couple more pallets, put them away in the cooler, and then go write stuff down. So I didn't actually see him doing any kind of real-time documenting of where things were actually located within the cooler itself. Yeah. And then, and then we had Steve. He was in charge of picking all those orders. How do you think that, uh, that Ian's practices would affect Steve's work? So once again, I had an opportunity to watch Steve uh, pick a couple orders for their later nighttime deliveries. And Steve did a lot of hunting and searching through the cooler, looking for individual products to make up these small pallets that were going out to restaurants. He would look for a case, look for a box, um, go to the next bay, look for a case, look for a box. And, and there seemed to almost be a, um, exciting when he found the product that he was looking for. Uh, he, he, there, were, there was a lot of time that seemed to be uh, wasted, maybe mismanaged, looking for product. As he, was, as he was going through the cooler looking for it. So what I could see from Steve, uh, from, from the, the inventory put away practices from earlier in the day, I think there was a lot of frustration on his part. It's always good to hear about real world scenarios about our topics. Let's take a moment to review before we move on to the next section. Inventory is the bridge between production and shipping and having high visibility enables an efficient dispatch process. In other words, Steve the shipper needs to have high visibility over Peter the producer's production in order to have an efficient dispatch process and maintain a high customer service level. In this section, we will explore how we can use software to fulfill this mission to have an efficient handover between production and shipping. If there is a system to build and store pallets, then is that better than the paper approach? Let's address the challenge. The products are scanned to a pallet or the system builds the pallet. So the opportunity for a typo or a transcription 
mistake is very low. There's also a digital record for each license plate, so if the label falls off, it can be investigated, reprinted, and reattached without recreating the entire palette. What if we make a small change in the process for putting away pallets? When the crew gets to the destination, we scan the location barcode and the pallet's license plate barcode to assign it to the proper location. There's no paperwork, there's no transcription, and there's no typos in this scenario. What advantages do we get by having digital records for restacking? For starters, we can see the real content of each pallet digitally on the scanner client. Once the work is done, we can make a reprint with the actual contents for each pallet. In the event we forget to reprint the pallet's contents, the actual contents are still visible in the system and on the scanner. As an added bonus, we can print the customer's information on the pallet's license plate for easy identification. Shipping needs to track down their products, no problem. They can see where the products are in real time from the scanner client or an inventory dashboard. For a physical inventory check, the crew suits up and they get a scanner instead of pen and paper and they run off and scan everything. What's different in this method? Double scanning doesn't adversely affect the results because all products are serialized. There's no transcription because it's all handled real time. Inventory checks can also be run on individual locations, aisles, or rooms to reduce the scope and the time taken to verify part of the inventory. And there's no paperwork to reconcile. Now that we have a software solution to keep track of our inventory, what other benefits can we realize? So we covered labeling, palletizing, inventory, and shipping in our previous session. What else do we need here to get full traceability? Once we link up receiving and raw materials inventory to our production and dispatch process, we can easily see the full details of where the product came from and where it went to. This can be really powerful when faced with a mock recall or even a real recall. Let me introduce Michael Parrish. He's our product manager for much of these inventory and dispatch solutions. One other topic he's very interested in is food safety. And he would like to speak briefly about our digital quality control component of our software. Thanks, Dustin. This is a great topic and inventory management is really important. But I'm gonna add one other puzzle piece to this. What do you do with your quality assurance and food safety information in relation to inventory management. So there's steps that take place naturally, things like label verification, product verification, but those are sometimes isolated out and not part of that flow. So what if you were able to bring these in? What if you were able to identify a problem and isolate it, put it on a QA hold, make sure it doesn't go into inventory, or if it is an inventory, isolate it within that so that people can't bring it out and accidentally get that product to a consumer. So having this information embedded, bringing in other puzzle pieces to even inventory are amazing and critical things to success. Isolate the problem, react swiftly, give a whole different dynamic to traceability as well. Thank you, Michael, for that. Next, let's review a couple examples about how we can leverage extra benefits by using our integration services module. One application is to use our master data management feature to design and distribute product settings and label designs from a central location to make sure our multiple site operations are all consistent. Another application is to export the results of orders and shipping to external sources to reduce paperwork. We can also pull in traceability and product configuration information from an ERP system, such as SAP or Dynamics. Let's take a short demonstration about how this inventory process works. 
We have an inventory display here. Peter, the producer, needs to get his products to Steve, the shipper. They have a set of rules they agreed upon that are enforced by the system to help make the traffic easier to manage. The first rule is that row one, which is slots 1A, B, and C, can only accept chicken products, and chicken products can't go in any other locations. The second rule is that row three has a space constraint and it can only accept one pallet per slot. So Peter has released four pallets of products. They're visible here in our holding area. Enter Ian. He's in charge of our inventory operations. Ian decides that the chicken should go first because it's fresh and he wants to get it in the cooler. So he takes his first pallet of chicken and he runs it over to slot 3A. He selects 3A from the list or he scans the location barcode and then scans the license plate to assign it to the slot. The inventory location refused this pallet. He remembers slot 3 not only can only accept one pallet, but it doesn't accept chicken. Chicken has to go in 1A. So he runs his pallet back over to 1A and scans it to the location. He then goes and grabs his other pallet of chicken, which is number 58, runs that to 1A, and assigns that to the slot. You can see as he's scanning these products, they're near instantly updated in the system, so you can see the status real time. Next, he decides it's time to put away his salmon. So he takes the first pallet of salmon, 59, runs that over to 1A, because it's close to the door, and assigns it to the slot. The inventory location refused the pallet. Again, he remembers to himself that only chicken can go in row one. So he runs his pallet of salmon over to 3A, where it's supposed to go, and assigns it to that location. Now he goes back and gets his last pallet, number 60. He drives that over to 3A and assigns that to the location. The inventory location is full. He remembers to himself, of course, row three can only have one pallet in each slot. So how about I put that in slot 3B? Now that all of his pallets have been put away, he can sit back and enjoy that he has a well-organized inventory. When Steve the shipper comes in looking for a pallet, now he has a high level of confidence that the product is where he thinks it is. As we wrap up, let's review our mission statement. Inventory is the bridge between production and shipping, and having a high visibility enables an efficient dispatch process. In other words, Steve the shipper needs to have high visibility over what Peter the producer is producing in order to have an efficient dispatch process and maintain a high customer service level. This concludes our presentation on inventory. Thank you all for joining us here today. We will start our question and answer session shortly. Thanks everyone for joining us. First, uh, I'd like to say, please enter in some questions so we can get your questions answered. And uh, now I'd like to introduce our panelists. So coming at us from Kansas, we have Michael Parrish, which you may remember him from the video. He's a product manager here with our software group in charge of a lot of these solutions we're talking about. And also we have Louis Bardick. He's coming at us from Illinois and uh, he's the head of our service organization for software here in North America. Okay, so let's uh, let's jump right into our questions then. So uh, how about this first question here? Uh, Louis, I think you're the person to answer this. 
Sure. And the question is, what does the inventory system deliver to me? Well, I think the inventory system within the Innova architecture is a variety of offerings uh, from raw material holding to finished goods holding to work in progress and its capability is built around the protein sector and manufacturing that product as well as being able to hold those levels of inventory. Uh, it's very specifically built around uh, the food industry needs and uh, so coupled together with a good ERP integration you really get that manufacturing process and that end information for your business level transactions. Good thanks a lot for that yeah. and uh, that's an excellent point because you know we covered the the sort of the final goods part of this inventory but there's a lot more that this system can Correct. deliver. Yeah so excellent. Uh, next question here for Michael. Um, can the QC system run standalone or does the whole factory need to be integrated? Yeah, so good question. So technically the QC system can can operate standalone from anywhere to receiving to dispatch, uh, but the more integrated it is, the more kind of dynamic the delivery is. So if you have it really uh, rooted into like what we're talking about here, having a uh, inventory system and being able to operate within that inventory system, it's just that much better of a delivery. So short answer, yes. Better answer is the more it's connected, the better it is. And then we have some packages that really deliver against that per protein as well. Some pre-built things. Yeah, good. That's exciting news. I hope the, we get that out to the world here as soon as we can. And there's a similar question in our list here. And um, does it? It's, hold on a second. I think you, maybe you could follow up on this one, Louis. And uh, the question here is: Sorry, what type of features does your inventory solution support? Yeah. So, uh, so it's a loaded question. There's a lot behind our inventory system. Uh, so, a combination of variety of life, uh, LIFO, FIFO type rules, ma managing uh, expiration first in, first out type scenarios, the ability to uh, have direct put away uh, within the, the demo, the ability to set limitations around uh, location management uh, limits, uh, pick to pack functionality, uh, building uh, direct picking rules. Uh, just there's a variety of uh, RFID support, barcoding support, mobile solutions integrated into it. There's a variety of different lists of uh, capabilities we offer. <laughs> Good. Yeah, there's there's a lot to it more yeah, than yeah. covered and that gives us an opportunity for a future session on some of these other features. That's yep. really good. So um, next question here. How about? Uh, this is a, I think this is another good one for you, Louis. The question here is how can I tell when I have products expiring? Yeah, so within Innova, we can set up dashboarding, out of the box dashboarding and reporting, and we can customize it and tailor it to the application requirements. Uh, so we can easily get visibility to the different inventory uh, levels and items. And we can also take it to another level, categorize the items, so create a categorized base inventory, uh, really show you what's available on hand and by certain expiry rules. Good. Mm -hmm. And there's, uh, a, there's a reporting function to that too. So yeah. uh, that rules or, or those dynamics can be sent to you in different ways, be it, you know, like a, a dashboard as we were seeing in the demo, yeah. but it, it can also be a report sent to key people uh, that really need to know kind of that aging rule or that aging inventory as well. Yeah, even your uh, sales uh, department. Sales. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, thanks a lot for that. And since I got you on the line here, <laughs> um, Michael, what type of inventories does Innova support? Yeah, so that I, I think we keep circling around. It, it, it's quite robust, right? So the most common ones we, we see is just some sort of raw material uh, whip, so work in progress, or as we've been focusing on here, more that finished goods. But I mean, it's, it, it's open enough to handle a lot of different things, uh, smokehouses, uh, uh, dry goods. I, I mean, it, it's a bit endless. It's just based on uh, how we operate it and set it up. We're, we're able to really adapt to those needs. And like Louis had said before, 
you know, it's really about the manufacturing side or the production side based on those uh, industry needs that we're really adapting to. I, I don't know if you guys have any other examples of kind of maybe uh, different different applications we've done for inventory. Yeah, I would say uh, from a live animal inventory side or yeah. managing live yard inventories, uh, tracking loads going in, putting loads on hold, uh, ability to get that complete live yard visibility, carcass tracking, things of that nature. So inventory can be used in a lot of different different uh, different types of scenarios. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I got a follow up question here for you, Louis. Since I got you here, does the inventory system propose a pallet and boxes road to guide the operator for customer order preparation? I think what he's he's asking here is, can we use the the system to to sort of guide the products into the, the finished orders for, with the inventory. Uh, are, you, are you saying more of being able to pick to an order and have pull up a specific customer order and the system give you basically the visibility to where those specific pallets or which particular boxes. So we like to call that knitting and knitting to an order. So we can take a variety of products and put them onto a, a particular customer order uh, and the system would give you, yes, the capability on the gun or on a reporting level to go and physically find the location of those items. Good, yeah, I think that's good. And, uh, and if we miss something, please enter in another question. We'll get that answered. And uh, while I got you here, how about we answer this question, which is, does the inventory system work with ERP systems? I think it's probably a good question for Michael. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Michael, fair enough to yeah. answer this. Uh, so yes, it, it definitely does. So through our integration services, we're able to make those connections. Uh, and that's really where kind of that dynamic of more of that kind of costing pricing side can come in and, and bring a different delivery to what our system does as well. So those are really common practices for us, uh, but it is just through our integration services um, and it doesn't particularly matter um, type or flavor, if you will, of ERP system, we're, we're really able to cater to that. Yeah, yeah I think it's good to add a little bit there, Dustin, sure. is we, uh, we tend to see a lot of where Nova is really strong and powerful at is on that manufacturing layer. We really focus on making sure we can get the right products on that order and on that shipment or being able to link back to production and understand what additional product needs to be produced. Uh, where we get into that business layer, when we tie this uh, audit trail or movements or inventory levels, it allows these ERPs to really um, look at the costing perspective as Michael was bringing up, uh, value, those value those inventories, or maybe they have additional hooks on there for forecasting or demands in the future. Yeah, uh, it's kind of interesting because I, I think an ERP system would definitely claim to take on inventory for a plant, right? And, and we make that claim as well. But the best delivery that we're finding is is having the two, um, respecting where kind of some of those just normal boundaries are or, or kind of governance uh, really stands. So when you've got our production system delivery inventory and then you've got the aspect of the costing and the business side too, it, it's a beautiful merriment and it's a really nice delivery for our customers in that respect. Yeah, an example would be like MRP being able to connect into Innova for replenishment. Yeah, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this this next question here, this is kind of, you know, a mix between inventory and, and integration. So maybe you can take a stab at this, Louis. Does the inventory system, can it manage truck inventory between two Innova sites? Absolutely. So uh, 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 if you're storing product on a trailer, you can set them up as virtual locations. So we've had a variety of systems out there where that actually happens and we're producing transfer inventory orders between sites or I should say sites and trailers. But yeah, truck level inventories are capable. And yeah, sense. and and a little bit to add to that, you know, it's it's a uh, you know, once you have your your information all hooked up to your inventory, your truck inventory or your shipment, then we use these transfer orders or the there's a module within integration that that does that specifically. So once you have that collected, it's really easy to move it back and forth. 
between that, sites. That's where some of that like itemized versus non-itemized really plays into um, specific pack pallet versus bulk, where the the truck could be considered more of that bulk, right? That bulk movement, but yeah. you've got that adaptability, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right, we got one more question here. I think this is a good one. Maybe Louie, you could take this one. Okay. And the question here is, what happens if you get two different labels on a pallet? One is good and the other one has been removed or lost from another pallet. Are you able to find which one is good and where the wrong one should go? So if I understand correctly, you got two cases on a pallet. One of the cases can be scanned and one of the cases cannot be scanned. I think it, uh, if you have two pallet labels, if you have, yeah, if you if you if you have two pallet labels, I guess you're you'll be able to do an inquiry back to the original order that pallet belongs in. So you technically should be able to see uh, the associated pallet that belongs, or you can inquire an additional case on that pallet to pull up the details of the original pallet ID that that case belonged to. Yeah, good. I, I'd like to add one thing here. Mm -hmm. So when you're when you have these all these digital records of your your pallets, one of the advantages is when you look at that pallet record on the scanner or in your dashboard, you can see the actual contents, right? So when your pallet label is incorrect, you can in some cases just scan one of the boxes to create a new record, but you can also see what the contents of that pallet are directly on the scanner. So there's a lot of different ways to kind of, you know, investigate what's going on when you have these multiple pallets sitting there. Correct, yeah. We do have some uh, scenarios where we just, you know, in this particular case, you're using multiple pallet labels, but we do have the capability within the system as well to pre-print the pallet ID on every individual case. So if you have a product going out that needs to be organized as back to the original you know, license plate, the system can pre-print that virtual pallet ID on that case label. So this way you make sure those cases belong on that pallet all the time. Yeah, that's another good point. Mm -hmm. Just I all right. imagine doing any of that on paper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point too. All right, let's see if we have any, any other questions here. I'm not sure what this question is but we'll give it a stab anyway. Louis, maybe you can, can go for this one. And the question is, do we support pick to light? You know what that is? Uh, we do, we have we have some functionality of, we've looked at some technologies of pick to light, uh, pick to voice, being able to uh, broadcast a location and actually use it as a, a, say, a directional or instructions for where, say, maybe looking at all this text on a scanner is not as easy for somebody so giving them a specific location a particular light or a voice uh, we have looked in some of these technology we take them by case by case but some of this more uh, some of these more uh, say uh, automated uh, versions i would i would say we take that through our product management team or our specialists to and look into it make sure it's capable of supporting that feature interesting yeah that's uh I didn't even know that existed, so that's good. To, to speak from that product management side, um, as Louis saying, there there are good future initiatives. Um, just how uh, how we interact uh, with with that information. Uh, there's a lot better technology that's coming out every year uh, that makes this much easier, much more adaptable. So these are future things that we're looking into. Um, but like Louis said, it, it's always good to bring those requests in. Um, it's great to hear about them for myself, uh, being the product manager. And yeah, the, this is stuff that we want to work on. We want to make this just easier for our customers. And yeah. I think Dustin, we can probably go on and on talking about even IoT capabilities within <laughs> Morel's technologies and you know feeding into Innova inventories and performing a lot of those tasks way in advance. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Hey, here's another question. This is an interesting one. I think you can take this one, Louis. Um, are you able to check our floor scale, the actual pallet rate, reading the barcode info and see if there's any box missing when loading the truck? Huh. If you can't answer that, I can. Yeah, why don't you go ahead, Dustin? Yeah, so um, I think what, what he's asking here is, uh, you know, if you have a tethered scanner hooked up to your, your station with the floor scale, you can scan the barcode and then compare the, the gross weight of the pallet to what the system thinks 
So therefore, if it's more than a, you know, a couple pounds off or whatever it is, then uh, you can identify that there's a box missing pretty easily okay. by doing that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good question. I think I got that covered. We're doing that in a few um, instances here in North America and up in Alaska, so that's good. Okay. And unless there's any other questions coming in, I don't see any. I think that's about all the time we have. We went a little over today. I apologize for that, but I hope you got some good information here at the end. So thanks everyone for coming and keep an eye on our events page for our next webcast.